Hey guys, and welcome to my first anatomy tutorial video. And today I will be talking about the brachial plexus. Um, I'm learning about this in class myself, and I figured that if I can teach it to other people, then it will be a good indicator of how well I know it, and it will help me study. So just before we begin, I want to give people that may not know just an idea of what the brachial plexus really looks like and obviously my drawing is an oversimplification but if you can do the drawing then you'll have a pretty good understanding of where things should go and so you can follow the branches from your theoretical drawing and then figure it out when you're actually tested on it on, real, on a real cadaver. So I start out by drawing a leftwards facing Y, a rightwards facing Y, and another leftwards facing Y. Then multiplication sign, division sign, a line all the way down, make an H. dotted line, and then kind of an M looking thing. So that's my base, and then I'll fill in all the other things. Okay, so when you look at the brachial plexus, it's divided into regions, and this first region are the roots, or the ventral rami, and you start with C5 go to T1. This next division here, or portion I should say, are the trunks. There's three of them. There's five roots, by the way. And you have your superior, middle, and inferior trunks. All those trunks divide. So we have divisions. And there are also, there are six of these. Anterior division, anterior division, posterior division, posterior, posterior, anterior. And the way I remember this is I look at the three here that all merge. And so that's all posterior, and then I know that the others are the anterior divisions. Next we have three chords. So we have the lateral chord. All these posterior divisions merge to make the posterior chord. And we have the medial chord. Lastly, we have the branches. And for my class, I have to know 17 of them. And I think there's probably a couple more, but 
you may or may not have to know it more in depth than I do. And if you do, I'm sorry I can't help you. So all the branches are what these are. So we'll start by naming. This big long one. It's the long thoracic. Then we have the phrenic, the dorsal. And we have the medial pectoral, the lateral pectoral. And I remember this one, it communicates between the two pectorals. So this one has the communicans. And this triplet here are the upper middle and lower subscapular. This middle one is also known as the thoracodorsal. I think that might be more common. Lower subscapular. These two here dotted line is dotted because it's really hard to see. Some cadavers don't even have them. So it's kind of a hard find. But it's the branch of C7 to owner. The owner nerve, which we'll get to. So for this part, a lot of students remember the mnemonic my aunt raped my uncle, if that helps you remember it. And we have the musculo cutaneous. We have the axillary radial median and ulnar nerve. This branch here is lateral contribution to the median nerve because it comes from the lateral cord. And same with this one, this is the medial contribution because it came from the medial cord. So that's about what most people have to know, I would assume, for your kind of basic anatomy class. And if this was all you needed, then feel free to stop the video. But I'll go into a little bit more depth, and I'll talk about what the nerves actually innervate as well. So all of this is within the axilla, the armpit area. But these nerves don't just stop there, they actually continue. And so musculocutaneous emerges as the lateral antibrachial. The 
axillary continues. That's the lateral brachial continues. And the radial is kind of tricky. It has four divisions. First one is the posterior brachial cutaneous. And we have posterior antibrachial. And then your deep superficial radial nerves. So now I'll talk about what all the nerves actually innervate, what muscles they go to, what movements they produce. A long thoracic goes all the way the serratus anterior. Your dorsal scapular goes and innervates the rhomboids and the levator scapula. The phrenic innervates the diaphragm. Suprascapular innervates the supra and infraspinatus. Your medial pectoral innervates your pec major and minor. Lateral pectoral only innervates the pec major. Medial brachial cutaneous. I'm not sure what that is. I don't have to know it. Your upper subscapular interface the subscapularis. Thoracodorsal goes all the way to your lats. Into some dorsi. And lower subscapular the subscapularis, as well as teres major. <clears throat> your musculocutaneous is responsible for your elbow flexors. Axillary is responsible for the deltoid, as well as teres minor. Radial is responsible for elbow, wrist, and finger extensors. As well as your supinator muscle. The median is responsible for your wrist and finger flexors. as well as pronator muscle. The ulnar nerve is responsible for other hand intrinsics, intrinsics and movements. <clears throat> so that's about the detail I wanted to go into. I hope it was helpful to you in some way. And again, this is just a theoretical look at the brachial plexus. In reality, it's much more complicated and it can actually vary from person to person. Some people will have branches at random places where other people don't. Sometimes the, ner the nerves will actually divide 
and go have like two of the same nerve, but a division of it going to the same place. So it's kind of tricky because it's never the same from person to person. And this is actually a very clean dissection. It doesn't ever look this nice, really. So best of luck in studying, and thanks for watching.